I'm a big fan of the uh, boxing radio show and YouTube sensation that is the boxing voice. I always try and watch it and take in as much as possible as I can and really enjoy the different opinions. And one reason I do really like the show is how passionate the debate is, how intense every argument tends to be. It really does make for entertaining viewing, listening, however you want to describe it. Um, there was a fight this weekend I didn't actually watch. Jamel Charlo versus Varnes Martirosian. Now, I guess it's fair to say, obviously I'm aware of both guys. Jamel Charlo is one of these much talked about prospects. Varnes Martirosian, um, you know, very highly regarded. Technical draw against Lara. <sighs> Close loss to uh, Dimitri Sanjade who's a guy who I rate very highly. Now, on BoxRec, for example, Jamel Charlo is rated number four at light middleweight. Marta Ocean is rated number eight. But for some reason, I didn't get overly excited about the fight. It didn't really strike me as a, a very entertaining one, so I didn't watch it. And I was quite taken aback um, by how intense the debate was on the boxing voice over who had won this fight. Um, so I've watched that, and I must say, having sat through the 10 rounds of the fight, it wasn't an entertaining fight in the sense that it was an all-out war, you know, it, it wasn't like that, but I find it an entertaining fight because I enjoy trying to score difficult score fights and I enjoy the debate that comes with it and the discussion about what type of work people prefer. And I find this one really, really hard to score. Really hard to score. Um, I think the fairest score in reality is a draw. If I really had to pick a fighter, because you know sometimes you have draws where you lean towards one fighter. Uh, as I say, I, I think the draw is the fairest result, but if I had to pick a fighter, I'd probably go with Varnes Martirosian. I thought... He was the more aggressive fighter. I thought he pushed the action more. I thought he came forward more. And I thought his punches looked more hurtful. It was a weird one because I thought Jamel Charlo's punches were snappier, quicker. I thought his jab was more eye-catching. But when Varnes landed, I thought it hurt his opponent more than when Jamel Charlo landed. Um, I gave Varnes the first two rounds. I thought he was the really pushing the pace, controlling the action. And this was one of the key things they were arguing about in the boxing voice. It was uh, you know, who was being the ring general, who was sort of being the boss in there. And I thought early on that was Varnes. Uh, I thought his body work in the first couple of rounds was really, really eye-catching. Um, he was landing really, really nicely to Jamel Charlo's body. And then eventually, he was starting to counterpunch Jamel Charlo, which is something you typically associate with the more technical, slicker boxer. But not in this case. Um, I thought towards the middle of the fight, you know, rounds three onwards, Jamel Charlo um, started to come into it a bit more. I gave Charlo the third. Um, and I think one thing I would say about Jamel Charlo is I give him three quick positives. Firstly, the jab. It's very snappy, quite accurate. I like the jab. Secondly, he can bend, he can give angles, he's got upper body movement. I really, really like that, you know, ducking, weaving, you know, changing his shape. I really, really like that. Thirdly, and I think this is something that does need to be discussed, for light middleweight, I think he's got quite good ring coverage uh, with his reach. You know, there were a few times he threw like a long punch, and I remember thinking that it was going to miss. But he actually had fair accuracy with those sort of long shots. I think it's because he has a way of throwing and moving his body so that he uh, gets a large amount of ring coverage. And I think he's got fairly decent reach for like middleweight anyway. Uh, I think the commentator said he had a three inch reach advantage over Varnes, for example, which suggested that may well be the case. So I viewed it as a very, very close fight. I won't go round by round, but essentially, I thought Jamel Charlo perhaps was the slightly more talented competitor. I thought Varnes hit slightly more powerfully 
and Barnes possibly control the action slightly more. Very, very tight fight. I could see it going either way. I cannot really understand how someone came up with a wide scorecard on this one. For me, it was 6-4 either way or a draw. My inclination would be to slightly side with Varnes. Now, where do both guys go from here? I think that's the specifically interesting question with regard to Jamel Charlo. I think Varnes could have won this fight. I think he took his foot off the pedal in the middle rounds. Um, he stopped throwing to the body. He stopped his punching output being so high. He stopped coming forward so much. And I thought that was a real same. I thought if he'd had an extra 5 10% maybe, he would have definitely got the job done. And I think if he could have kept the pace and the action that he set in the early rounds throughout the fight, I'd definitely give it to him. So, based on that, you'd have to say Jamel Charlo is beatable. Um, sometimes it's funny in boxing how you'll notice a similar type of fighter is prevalent in one division. For example, at £140, there are a lot of fighters who you may categorise as brawler, brawlers, or as the white would say, mid-range hookers. You've got guys like Provodnikov, uh, Lucas Matisse, Lamont Peterson, Danny Garcia, you've got guys who come for a scrap and sometimes a fighter who offers something different, in my opinion like Adrian Broner, can be successful in that division because the fighters at the top fight in a certain way and they can offer something different. Um, at 154, the main man is probably Canelo. Taking him aside, you've got a lot of fighters who are slick boxers, who are movers, who are technicians. I know there are differences, obviously, but Erislandi Lara, the Charlo Brothers, Demetrius Andrade, I feel that they are a similar kind of player in the division. I feel that there are similarities in the way they fight. They're all talented amateurs. Um, you know, they've all got that sort of jab. They're all capable movers. And it, it's just unfortunate for them that there's three or four guys in the same, same type of mould, same type of league at the same time. If one of those guys, for example, was £140, I think they could give the Provodnikovs, the Matisse's, the Petersons of this world, all kinds of problems because their style is so different. But it's weird how those three have come along, Charlo, Lara, Andrade. And to me, Charlo is probably the inferior, Jamel Charlo, of those three names. I feel the way Varnes was able to push him back, the way Varnes was able to land to his body, control the accent, I think based on that, I'd pick Canelo to have quite an easy night's work over Charlo. Um, I just don't think Charlo has quite got the slickness, the combinations, the power of an Andrade, for example. So I think because of that, I'm not high on the Jamel Charlo hype train at present. I think there's fighters in the division who are similar to him, but better stylistically. And I think the problems that a guy like Varnes Martirosian was able to call him, cause him. Imagine if it was Canelo on the other side of the ring. As a result, I think Jim El Charlo has got certain attributes, as I say, bending at the waist, going low, fighting low, making himself small, the jab, the movement, the slickness, um, the hand speed, you know, there, there are lots of pros, but I just thought, even in victory, Jamel Charlo got found out, and I don't think it'll be long before he loses his undefeated record.
let me know your thoughts thanks for watching if you haven't already seen it check out the boxing voice inspired me to watch this fight very very interesting